Hey IAs and welcome to the IAPath Auto IA Show where we walk you through how to become a successful independent adjuster by starting, diversifying, or increasing your earnings with auto claims. If you're ready, we can get started right now. Today on the show, I want to walk you through PDR markups. A lot of times we as IAs don't understand the challenges that someone who's fixing a hail damaged vehicle face. These people and technicians who are working on these vehicles are called PDR technicians and they have challenges that we don't understand and I want to help make you aware of those challenges today because otherwise you're looking around like I don't get what's happening here. Kind of like this building. For all the best tips, tricks, and tools, head on over to Adjuster TV's YouTube channel and click the subscribe button. While you're there, don't forget to hit the bell notification so you'll get notified every time we have a new video. PDR markups. What the heck are they? Why are they there? And are they important to us as IAs? And the answer is yes. Today, I'm bringing in Paul Corden. He's recorded a bunch of great material for us as IAs to learn from a 20-year PDR technician who comes into nationwide insurance carriers and instructs their adjusters on the importance of PDR markups, how vehicles are repaired using paintless dent repair, and what we need to be aware of when writing estimates. Take it away, Paul. What, what Chris is referring to is uh, with hail, where it can get a little bit complicated is uh, when we have to deal with things like, for instance, glue pulling, or we start to get into uh, the 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 uh, what what the substrate is made of. For instance, uh, not every hood is made out of steel. Some hoods are made out of high strength steel. Some hoods are made out of aluminum, and there are upcharges in accordance with each of those uh, variables or factors that can affect how much time energy and effort has to be put into the repair. Um, that, anal I, the, I use a, uh, an acronym for that, we call it tea time uh, when I'm teaching. And tea time is time, energy, and effort. And the idea is that things, and this is true in the collision repair industry as well, anything that takes more time, energy, or effort to repair usually comes along with an, addi an additional cost. Um, it, it's, it's kind of just the way that the world works, right? Uh, you get what you pay for. And so uh, a couple of common upcharges that we have are uh, aluminum is, is certainly uh, a, a big one. Uh, we're starting to see more aluminum in cars. Uh, it's light, but it's strong, and the manufacturers are using it more and more uh, to hit um, EPA standards and things like that. Um, just a side note, uh, Chris can probably give you this link, but I was part of a study that the uh, Automotive Services Association, along with one of our industry organizations called NAPDART, or National uh, Association of PDR Technicians uh, did where we took aluminum panels and steel panels and we tested them uh, with a scientific method to, to find out just how much more time, energy, and effort it really takes to repair aluminum. And uh, you'll see in the stu study, and, and it's noted here, that uh, on average it took between 70 and 150% more pressure to repair damage in aluminum than it does steel. Uh, therefore, uh, you'll see on a hail matrix where there's a 25% markup on aluminum. Now, if you ask me as a PDR guy, I think 25% doesn't exactly match up with a 70 to 150% more time, energy, effort, more pressure to repair it. But um, that's okay. We're, we're, we're working and we're moving in the right direction. Uh, also, high strength steel. Uh, there's a lot more high strength steel coming into play. High strength steel is... Um, usually a little thinner, but also a little stiffer, takes a little bit more expertise. Um, and also know this about aluminum and high strength steel. Not all, there's, we don't, uh, the manufacturers don't just use aluminum or high strength steel. They actually have different variances of aluminum and different variances of high strength steel. And from manufacturer to manufacturer, those things will change as many of you might already know. Uh, so those are two of the most common ones. Another one is double panel or uh, glue pull. And here's, where, here's why I use both terms. They kind of both indicate uh, the same situation. Anytime we have a dent in an area that doesn't allow us to get access from the backside, um, we'll write it for either what's called double panel or glue pull. Um, the reason I use both is because depending on the insurance company that you're writing for, they will usually have their own kind of inner 
uh, verbiage for that. Uh, I've, I've been in situations with hail catastrophes where I might write something up and I call the markup a double panel markup and the insurance company will tell me, well, we, we won't pay for that. Uh, but if I put glue pull on there, they're like, oh yeah, we know what glue pull is. We'll, we'll pay, we'll pay for that markup. Hey everybody, this is Paul from Dent Shop and I want to go over something with you that you're already dealing with in the field and you will continue to deal with as you uh, write hail claims out in the field. What I want to talk about today is the uh, structure of a door, of a pretty common layout for a door and how it can affect the markups that we use when writing hail damage claims. Um, as you can see here, this is from an, a Nissan Altima. Uh, however, the inner structure of the door is pretty common when uh, going from OEM to OEM or manufacturer to manufacturer. You will often see a layout like this in your typical side door. Um, what I want to do for you is mark out what we call the upper brace on this door. This is a pretty common piece. As you'll notice, uh, when I stick my hand down in the cavity of the door, my hand will disappear because this upper brace is obstructing the access to the back side of the skin. So you'll see this brace does not allow us to use our PDR tools on the back side of the skin from this portion upward. It's because of this brace that we have limited to no access to the back side of the sheet metal on this door and we will use what's called glue pulling in order to repair hail dents on this door. Oftentimes when hail hits on a side panel, the majority of the damage will be on the upper portion of the door. Occasionally the damage can go all the way down to the bottom in a severe situation. Uh, however, the, this is the where is uh, the area that is affected the majority of the time. And because of that upper brace, we do not have the access to the backside with tools that we'd like. And so you will see us write a markup on those estimates in the form of uh, the words glue pull or uh, double metal. You may see it used. Different insurance companies use different language. Um, you'll see a glue pull or a double panel markup on the upper portion of each of the doors on the side when it comes to hail damage. Occasionally, this strap in the middle of the door or the intrusion beam may also come into play when you have extreme hail that goes all the way down to the bottom of the door and then we've got to start dealing with the limited amounts of access to those portions of the door that may have hail dents on them. Uh, the majority of the time you will be dealing with this upper brace and that is the reason for the glue pull or the double metal markup on side panels when it comes to hail damage. So if you see this in the field you'll understand what we're talking about and if you've got any questions feel free to reach out. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, so to speak. Um, so, uh, going back to the tall vehicle markup, uh, this is an example uh, of um, when you're dealing with a taller vehicle where we have to start to get things like ladders and benches involved to get up just to be able to see the damage and work on it. It becomes difficult to, to access, difficult to reach and, and, and get everything repaired correctly. Again, it takes a little bit more time, energy and effort to do that. So we will charge a markup for tall vehicle. Um, as well as XL panels. Quite frankly, uh, a lot of times uh, a tall vehicle or, you know, extra large panels on a vehicle like a very long eight-foot truck bed or something like that will require additional tools and in some cases additional skill to actually repair properly. And uh, again, anything that takes more time, energy, and effort we usually associate with a markup. A um, couple of additional ones would be poor access. So, um, for instance, you're looking at uh, I have the privilege of having uh, Audi and Volkswagen's collision training center right next to my, my uh, shop. And I'm able to get a hold of some of these cars that are completely gutted. And in the picture that you see here on the left, uh, that's an Audi front fender with the uh, front bumper and the headlight removed. And you can see that even in some cases when we need to remove a bumper and a headlight assembly in order to get access to the fender to fix it correctly, it still gives us very, very limited access, believe it or not. Um, there are just parts of the car that are, you know, based on the manufacturer's process are just extremely difficult to get to. So uh, with very poor access, uh, it requires some, some different methods and we'll charge for that. Uh, I mentioned XL panels earlier. We went over that. Ribbed roof. Uh, ribbed roof, actually, um, so if you guys remember the picture of the roof that we were talking about uh, a couple pictures back, uh, ribbed roofs are interesting. And um, I've actually had to deal with this a number of times with insurance companies. And I usually have to show them um, and with adjusters. I have to show them because it's hard. It's a hard concept to understand. Chris, do you mind if we go back to that picture for just a second? 
Yeah, that one. Okay, so this is an example of a ribbed roof. Um, and what you're looking at is those uh, contours that are stamped into the roof by the manufacturer, uh, to, usually to add a little strength uh, sometimes for, for um, image um, or aesthetics, I should say. Uh, that presents a challenge for paintless dent repair technicians because uh, what happens is when, uh, if you can imagine that roof peppered by hail, uh, you'll have dents that fall uh, right on one of those ribs. It might fall right between the rib and the flat section between, and it might fall everywhere in there. And what happens is um, we can't always repair the damage from the adjacent angle of the rib. I don't know if that makes sense, but if I were looking from the right side of the car to uh, the left, we can't always see the damage because those raised ribs prevent us from seeing the reflections of our lights correctly, um, which leaves us to have to work much of that damage from the front or the back side. And in order to do that, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll write to uh, remove and reinstall uh, the lift gate. Or at times, we'll even uh, write to remove and reinstall the uh, windshield, depending on the vehicle. Uh, we had to deal with this in Idaho quite a bit last year, where we worked on a lot of trucks. And uh, I had to um, explain to the insurance companies why we were asking to remove the rear glass in the uh, cab of the truck. Um, because, you know, the, the, the idea was, oh, well, we can't you open the door and work on the roof through the doors. And theoretically, yes, we can. But when you have a ribbed roof, you have to look down the channels of those ribs in order to see all the damage. So that's uh, where rib, ribbed roof comes in. The picture that you see here on the left is actually a picture of sound deadening. That sound deadening is um, installed by the factory. And it's kind of like a really hard rubber, almost like a rhino lining or a, a Linex type of lining is what it feels like when you're working on that. This presents a very, very complicated problem for a PDR tech because now we've either got to hope that we can still repair the metal while pushing it through that sound deadening or that sound deadening is going to need to be removed and then reinstalled. And obviously, um, you know, there are many products out there that, that we can actually reinstall that sound editing. And it's there for a reason. Um, I would refer to any of the OEM spec sheets and uh, repair procedures on that stuff uh, if you have questions. Uh, a couple of other things. Laminated glass. We'll see this a lot um, in uh, some of the newer vehicles. Laminated glass is two panes of glass that's glued together. And uh, this glass tends to be very, very brittle. Where it presents a problem in a hail situation is when you have hail dents on a door and you are attempting to repair as many of those dents with tools as you can, normally a technician is going to go down through uh, the window. They'll put a guard over the glass, they'll wedge a small gap, and they'll use their tools to get behind that panel. Laminated glass makes this very, very tricky because it's a, it's a high liability for breaking the glass. And many times, instead of, I, I prefer just to avoid that, and in those cases, we may be asking the insurance company to give us the labor uh, to remove that and reinstall it when we're done. Um, another uh, uh, area that's very important probably to know about is extreme hail. And here's what I mean by extreme hail. Uh, most matrices, uh, hail matrices, will have uh, information about pricing on oversized dents. Uh, we call them OS dents or double oversized dents, DOS dents. And uh, an oversized dent is typically something that is bigger than a half dollar. Believe it or not, it doesn't take much to get there. Um, it's a lot of times it's even difficult for PDR guys to estimate what size a dent is. And so I usually will keep a quarter and a half dollar in my pocket on any given hailstorm. It's just a great way to keep uh, a reminder of really what kind of what size dents are we dealing with. Um, when we get into extreme hail, that's any dent that's bigger than a double oversized dent. A lot of times you may hear a double oversized dent referred to as a hen egg. It may even be mentioned on a, a number of matrices depending on which matrix you're using at the time. Uh, but anything bigger than a double oversized dent, uh, we start to go to the PDR price guide. And uh, the price guide is essentially what it is, is a process for estimating PDR that is consistent and it's, it's relatively widespread in the industry at this point. Um, it, it, the, uh, the price guide itself has been 
built into an algorithm into the software that most PDR guys are using at this point. And the process is pretty simple. It, it basically uh, requires you uh, to mark out, obviously we're assuming we're looking at, a, at hail damage inside uh, with professional lighting or some sort of hard line. And it allows us to, uh, that allows us to see and read the metal so that we can mark out the area of damage. And then what we do is we take a measurement of that damage and then we follow the guide. Uh, the guide takes into consideration three things. The size of the damage, uh, any factors or variables that affect the damage, such as aluminum or high-strength steel, uh, uh, a number of the other um, upcharges that we talked about, and then obviously any, any additional R&I or um, things that you need to do in order to correctly repair uh, that particular dent. And let me jump in here, Paul. I just want to make sure you guys understand what we typically deal with, I, the reason we're about today is perspective, right? This is what Paul and PDR technicians are dealing with and know, right? Most of us never even hear this stuff. So the extreme hail instance of using the PDR price guide that he's talking about is separate from what we are traditionally told to use. So you're probably not going to do that on an original estimate. The reason why I want Paul to talk about these things and brought him on is because when you go into a shop and you're talking with the PDR technician, and we're going to talk about that more in the third session, I want you to understand what they're talking about. Like this is much more complicated than we make it in our job, which is, is it a dime, nickel, quarter, or half dollar? How many dents? How many oversized dents? Well, that's $40 a dent. Great. Is there any markups? And there's only a few markups we're allowed to use and we move on. But it's a much more complicated repair process than what we deal with on the front end. So, you know, I really want you guys to understand, you're not going to be dealing with the extreme hail stuff and a lot of this until you might start dealing with supplements or after the storm when it's in a repair shop. Thanks, Paul, for helping us understand PDR markups and their importance in our estimates. If you're interested in becoming an independent auto damage appraiser or auto adjuster as a part of a diversified IA career, head on over to iapath.com and click the how to find work button. We have a free video course that walks you through exactly how to start your career and establish your IA business. Until next week, thank you so much for watching the Auto IA Show. Keep walking your path and claiming your life.